Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer by Michelle Hodkin. Now, I don't have the book with me because I got it from the library, but I'll put a picture up here somewhere so you can see the cover because it's kind of pretty. So this book is a young adult kind of weird psychological thriller-ish kind of book about a girl who has survived an accident and she can't really remember what's happened to her. And so her best friend and her boyfriend died in this accident and she doesn't know what happened. She doesn't remember what happened. So she ends up moving to a new town with her family and weird things start happening to her once she gets there. And basically people who she wants dead start dying, kind of. And she meets all these weird individuals and it's just kind of a little bit bizarre. So she meets this guy named Noah. He's British. Things happen because he's British. We all know. British men get a lot of tail. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But really, he's he's British. They kind of start hanging out, and she's a little weirded out by it because she's not sure if she's ready to handle a relationship because she has all this trauma and everything. And then weird stuff starts happening, and he's involved in it. So, explosive stuff happens, and it's crazy. So this book was not something I really enjoyed that much. I really, really thought I was going to for the first half of the book. I was so psyched up for this psychological thriller kind of book. And then the second half kind of just fell flat. It was like, it was being built up as this supernatural, maybe ghost story kind of thing. And weird stuff was happening all over the place. And I was really excited about it. And then we kind of found out what was going on. And it was like, wow, that was the worst explanation ever. Why, why, why couldn't something cooler be happening? And so I kind of just lost interest in it about three quarters of the way through, but I finished it because I wanted to find out if it got any better, and then the ending was a cliffhanger that didn't really make me want to read the next one, which was disappointing because I was so excited about this book. So I want to talk about a couple of things that worked for me and what didn't work for me. What did work for me was the psychological thriller aspect of the story, so the all the spookiness that was going on, the different weird memory things, like her amnesia kind of stuff, was really cool. So. We start all these really cool mystery threads going through the storyline, and crazy kidnappings happen, and crazy murders, and it's really cool! And that was awesome. Uh, there was one particular scene that I remember reading and being like, this is the best thing ever! And it was, she comes home, and the door's unlocked, and she's kind of like, what? And I remember, you know, when you, you know when you see like a horror movie or you're, re you're reading a book and you're like, don't go in, don't go in. I was having that feeling for like the entire first half of the book and it was amazing. So she goes into her house and all of the pictures on the walls had been moved to the other side. And that was it. That was the only thing that had changed. All the pictures, like all the pictures, like family stuff had been moved to the other side of the hallway. And I just thought that was like the best way to mess with someone. Oh, the best. And I was like, so, like, go spirits, whoever you are, I'm so excited, because you're awesome. And then it wasn't spirits, and it was kind of like, oh, I don't care. But up until that point, it was awesome. I really, I liked Mara's best friend. Cannot for the life of me remember his name. Maybe it started with a B. Can't remember. But he's kind of this quirky, like, nerdy dude who might be kind of gay, I'm not sure. It was very ambiguous, and he was just kind of goofy and fun, and he was always kind of watching out for Mara. He was like, don't get involved with these people, bad things will happen to you, and then she'd get involved with them and bad things would happen to her, and it was like, good job there, listening to your friend's advice. So I really, I liked him as a character, I thought he was really funny, he kind of had some comic relief going on, but he was also really wise, and I enjoyed that. Also her brother, I thought was, her both of her brothers actually, were really great grounding forces in the story. Her younger brother is kind of kind of ditzy and silly, but he says a lot of things that you're just like, wow, you were very wise for your young years. So some of the things I didn't like were obviously the big reveal, which I'm not going to talk about because I don't want to spoil it for you, but the sort of reveal of what was going on I felt was wildly unexplained and kind of boring and not really all that cool. So it was like, all this cool stuff was happening, and then the author was like, and this is what's actually been going on. It was kind of this big letdown. So that, that was just kind of a bummer for me, and also the weird supernatural stuff that was going on wasn't all that explained. It was minorly explained, but then not really elaborated on. And I felt like it could have been so much more complex and interesting than it was, which is kind of too bad. The other thing that I really did not like about this book, and I know I am going to get probably stoned for this, someone's going to start throwing rocks at me, I didn't like Noah. 
And I know a lot of people really do like Noah. I know just about everyone I know who's read this book, whether they liked the book or not, Noah's their favorite thing about it. And he's the main love interest. He's the British guy I mentioned before. And he's very charming and very British. So normally I would be totally down with the British cool sexy guy. But he was kind of a dick. He's got this reputation for being a ladies man. And yet, she kind of ignores that, and she's like, eh, it's okay. And then when he sort of admits to it, he's like, yeah, I was a ladies' man, but then I chose you because you're special. I had this, like, a sort of gag reflex moment of like, oh, God, why? Like, ugh. You're gonna, you're gonna let him excuse himself like that? That just seems wrong. And I think it's probably because he reminds me of my ex, like, a lot. And so I couldn't really deal with it. That may have been a personal issue for me, and other people won't have that problem. So don't let that deter you, but I wouldn't recommend this book very highly. I think there are better things to read. So unless you're dying to read this book, I would recommend finding something else to fill your sort of supernatural need. That sounded way dirtier than I meant it to. Um, if you guys have read this book, I would love to hear what you have to say about it, I'd love to have a conversation about it. I have a lot of feelings about this book that I need to express. And if you haven't read the book, um, have you read any other psychological thrillers that you like? That's a good question, because I'm not going to recommend it to you. And then also, I read this book with Kate Weber over at Kate's Book Club, so I think she's got a review up of it, or she's going to be putting one up soon, so you should check hers out as well, because we have some of the same thoughts, and I think she'll probably be better at expressing them than I was. <laughs> so I will see you guys next time. Bye.